and it's always under the leaves like you look on top of your leaves and it looks good right but but you get in there under your leaves look at this thing it's almost inevitable that at some point in your gardening season you're going to get attacked by pest pressure I don't think I've had one season where something hasn't gotten attacked by uh, this colony of some kind of pest, whatever, whatever you want to call them, uh, from the cabbage worms to the aphids to everything. Uh, so today is what I want to talk about is ways to control your pest pressure. For me, what I'm trying to get into is, uh, though I use uh, neem oil, let me show you. So, though I use the neem oil, uh, sometimes if you catch it early enough, or, or I would say more of a preventative measure, you want to use your neem oil. Uh, but sometimes you get you get really uh, things going on. You get kind of sidetracked, and then you come to some of your plants, and they're infested. Uh, you look around, and you try to look look around your garden and see what else is infested, and, and you find there's only a particular plant. Many times, uh, as in our case today. It's the kale plant I'm gonna show you. Now we've had this in the ground for some time and, and I think a lot of times the pests tell us, hey, this has been here too long. If you don't want it, I'll take it. Uh, and, and they just start to multiply. So I'll show you. Let me see if I can get you in good enough. You can see. How infested and it's always under the leaves like you look on top of your leaves and it looks good right but but you get in there under your leaves look at this thing this whole row is like that uh let me see let me pick one i'll just pick up one look at that This whole leaf, every leaf here. Look at this. Crazy, right? Uh, my family, more, more so, when they see this many pests on something, they won't eat it. Uh, I've tried to get them to just think about, look, we can soak it in water, let all that stuff die, wipe that stuff off. But then it, once they see it like that, it's a mental thing. They don't really want it. Uh, so, so Bev told me feed it to the chickens, which is good. I think that'll be the best option. Using neem oil, like I say, that's that's preventative. Uh, right now, I think if I, if you spray neem oil now, some of them gonna get away, some of them gonna die, uh, but some of them are gonna get away and go ahead on and go to other places. By feeding them to the chickens, I thought, when the chickens digest them, they might, uh, not be able to kill all of these or digest all of these uh, insects and some might go out into the manure and eventually cause it to come back when I add the manure on but but chicken manure is so hot I think it should kill any seeds any insects that's in it you never really see much insects uh, in chicken manure some worms sometimes uh, also I got this this is a, something new that I'm going to use this year, and this is diatomaceous earth. Don't go out and get that shaker box. If you buy your diatomaceous earth from like a tractor supply, get the big bag. It's cheaper to get the big bag. The big bag is like $9.99 or $13.99, and, and you can buy a, a shaker box of diatomaceous earth and probably pay $14. Uh, the only thing this you got to have your own shaker I use like some of my salt shakers or seasoning shakers that are empty and I just put the diatomaceous earth in them and come in and do my shaking that's what I'm gonna do this year right now I've cut out I don't know if you can see this so let me go to the other all view. of this came from this line here so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna continue to cut out the rest of these to bring to the chickens try to keep everything in, uh, in a box or in a pill that way they don't waste 
But for those that are still on the ground, cause, cause now I think it's infested the ground. So if I don't get them, and try to kill them out, then they'll live to go on to some other plants. So this whole area over here, is I'm gonna kinda label with this diatomaceous earth. Put it in your, your chicken coop, wherever they like to dust bathe, and it kinda helps keep the parasites off of them, right? So, all we're gonna do is continue Cutting the rest of these out. I'll let you see that. Drop it down. Putting them right up in. Trying to keep everything in this one place. Not throwing it around, but I'm doing it real nice and slow. Trying to keep as, as many of these things stuck to this kale as I can. I really should have tried to wash. This one doesn't look too bad. This one doesn't look too bad. I'm gonna try to save this one. At least a few leaves. Doesn't look like they're really on that one too much. This one either. So what this does is this, this allows you time to uh, think about what else you're gonna plant. And I'm gonna show you something that's perfect to put right here in this spot. Let me go feed this to the chickens. So the good thing about a compost pile is you get to add these crazy volunteer composted plants. And this is bell peppers. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm not losing. I, I took out what was infested, and now I'm gonna add in these. Uh, take them out, thin them out, and now I got more than what I need. So, control your pest, but uh, keep something on the side that's ready to go at all times. That way, you won't ever feel like you've lost. So, I hope this helps somebody, and as always, grow 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 without the pests peace but you need them sometimes tell you when stuff is ready i'm out <laughs>